Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video today. We're here with part 17 of our F1 2021 My Team Career Mode at the Mexican Grand Prix. Last time out we were in USA racing at Coda and we had an alright race ending up in P8 and scoring ourselves a couple points there to go towards the championship in that constructors fight that we are in with Aston Martin. A very close race with lots of battles, I think it was very enjoyable. If you didn't see it, make sure to go check that out before you watch this one. Uh, yeah, but you can see there just going through our summary for practice there, we got ourselves a bunch of resource points and a bit of a claim, but yeah, we don't really look at practice too much at this point in the series. Now we're going to have a look here though at the R&D chart and you can see sort of a bit of a flat line, not too much changing around, but we did close in just ever so slightly to Alpha Tower and Aston Martin there. Alpha and Mayer closed in on us though, you can see going right in on the lines. We are very, very close, all of us down in the bottom pack there, so... Yeah, there's certainly, I'd say we're definitely in a good position to be getting points now. Like, we should we should be able to go and get them every round. But at the same time, everyone else is so close. So, ending up in a battle could get you in, either in the points or right down towards the bottom of the field. Just, that's how close and competitive it has become at this point in the season. But you can see here, on our first qualifying lap, wasn't the best lap I've ever done, to be honest. Uh, a lot of mistakes. Just trying to sort of acclimatise myself to the track. You can see we crossed the line there. Ahead of both Haas cars, but about two and a half tenths off of Stroll and Russell there. You can see in P16. By the end of everyone's first lap, we were in P19. And Schwartzman, you can see, up in P15 there. So, yeah, definitely going to have to go out for a second lap here. And see if we can improve and maybe get ourselves up into Q2. So, you can see just heading down the straight here how long it is here and you would think you'd need a low downforce setup for this sort of track but due to how high up this track is it's actually important to have a high downforce setup because there's just not a lot of air density so there's not a lot of air but you can see through the first three corners there almost two tenths up as we break for turn four heading through the left into the right trying to make sure you get the traction and not wheel spin and ruin the tyres and just lose time in general through the double right hander and we're about three tenths up now as we head through the S's trying to make sure you don't lose the car through here it is very important to carry as much speed as possible without running off track or spinning in as we get out of there we've done alright we've gained ourselves about a tenth and a half compared to our first lap now breaking as we head into the stadium section we get ourselves to about five tenths up braking for this hairpin here. That's actually saved us a lot of time. You saw in our last lap we did that pretty poorly. So we're now up to nine tenths up as we head through the final corner, making sure to keep the car gripped up. And it's going to be about eight tenths up. And we are through to Q2. As you can see here, it is P13 for us. And you can also see our teammate Robert Schwartzman is through to Q2. And I believe that's our first time having both of us into Q2 so absolutely making progression at the moment and it's awesome to see Schwartzman sort of start and pick it up you can see he was only a tenth off of us there so yeah very very happy with this qualifying session so far let's hope to improve you can see heading into Q2 we're going to do our first up on the mediums because we only have this one set of mediums and one fresh set of softs left so yeah we want to we want to see if we can maybe get through on the medium tyres to help play into a bit of strategy in the race if we do go through to Q3. Uh, but of course we will run the soft tyres later on in the session just to, to make sure we, we go as fast as possible if we're not going to make it through into Q3 on these tyres. You can see heading through the last sector we have one of the McLarens all over the back of us I believe. Uh, he's on the softs so obviously having a much better run. You can see he actually pulls into the pit lane there so that was his in lap. And, yeah, we just don't have any pace on the mediums, you can see. But basically nine tenths off of Alonso, and we're behind Schwartzman as well. You can see about four tenths behind our teammate, who is also in 15th. So, <clears throat> not a great start to the session for us here. But hopefully on our second lap, we can try and move ourselves forward. So, you can see here we are preparing for our lap, making sure to get that last corner perfect. And I'm going to leave you with the lap.
So as we head through the final corner here, you can see it's been a pretty good lap, about one and a half seconds up. But unfortunately, we're not through to Q3. It's going to be P12 for us here in qualifying, which that is a great lap. But you can see the one person that was ahead of us there that got knocked out of Q2 was our rival Lance Stroll, which is a bit of a shame there. But very interesting to see that that's sort of how it worked itself out. You can see Schwarzman, unfortunately, down in P16 as well. So he wasn't able to do much with that qualifying session. But you can see going into quality summary, losing a point to Stroll there. We still have a two-point lead over him, though, in the overall rivalry, getting ourselves a bit of extra acclaim. At the moment, acclaim is start, it's, it's going a bit slowly. Hopefully, we can have a good race, or at least a good next couple of races, and try and get that a team acclaim level to level 15 and unlock that next sponsor. But, yeah, that's all to really talk about now. Let's move on to the race. Here we go then, it's time to race in Mexico City, a place which gave Honda their first ever victory back in 1965. American Richie Ginther won from third on the grid. And what are the Honda powered cars this year? Well, Red Bull have been going strong here in recent seasons, so can they keep that record going today? The Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez, 2.6 miles of track that allows drivers to take full advantage of their cars, reaching speeds in excess of 220 miles per hour and providing lots of opportunities for overtaking. The circuit features 17 corners, 10 to the right and the remaining seven going to the left. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box and it's fantastic to have you with us here today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, from the moment qualifying's over, you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as you anticipate the run down into turn one. It's all a bit like going into battle, and the unknown situation makes you nervous. Those pre-race nerves are a good thing. The day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you, so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Perez, Norris, Daniel Ricciardo, and Leclerc, Vettel, Stroll, Benjamin, and Max Verstappen. Ocon, Gasly, they've taken a grid penalty. Carlos Sainz, and Giovinazzi. Raikkonen, Sonoda, George Russell and Fernando Alonso. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Mick Schumacher, Schwartzman, Latifi. They've taken a grid penalty. And Nikita Mazepin. That's it then. It's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. So here we are on the grid preparing for the race. You can see here, looking at the strategy, it is going to be a two-stop. I tried to play around with it a little bit and see if I can make it a one-stop, but that was just all going to be slower. So in the end, I just decided to sort of move it around and put the medium stint in the middle to try and just finish the race off a lot quicker, but also start the race off on those soft tyres and not lose any ground to the cars behind us or ahead of us. And that's actually projected to be about a tenth and a half to two tenths faster than the strategy we were initially given by the team. So, yeah, pretty happy with that strategy. You may have also seen on that starting grid screen, we are in ninth place. So, yeah, a few engine penalties from people around us helping us out there. So we're already in the points-paying positions. It's just a matter of now trying to stay there or maybe even improve our spots. But you can see here, engines are revving with five lights and we are off for the Mexican Grand Prix. It's actually a very good start compared to our rival Stroll next to us. He's starting on the hard tyres and that's exactly why I wanted to start on the softs because he just got absolutely swamped there by everyone around him with more grip. But as we head down to turn one, you can see trying to get the slipstream off everyone, but also trying to defend from Max Verstappen, who's starting a bit further back after those penalties. And we are on the inside for turn one. He'll have the inside for turn two. A lot of cars going too wide through this first section here. As we get over that inside curve, it looks like he might have the better run 
and we are just going to have to tuck in behind him there. He's got that Honda Power unit, but we do have the Slipstream, so as we head into Turn 4, we're going to dive it back down the inside of Max Verstappen and go side by side through Turn 4 and 5. Even trying to have a little bit of look at Leclerc there, but he's just a bit too far ahead there. And we slot back into P8. So we've made up one spot there on Stroll. You can see he's already dropped down to P12 after starting in 8. So that's, as I said, the exact reason why I wanted to start on the fastest possible tyre. Because I just didn't want to be swamped by the AI off of the start. But we're going to have to focus now on closing in on the cars ahead. And make sure we don't give Verstappen an opportunity to move up as we head into the stadium section for the first time this race. Closing right in on the back of the Monogas driver as we go through the hairpin. Now through the right hander. Verstappen is right behind us as we go through the final corner now. Very important. Make sure we get on the traction to stay as close as possible. Not the best run. You can see the cars ahead pulling away. And having actually having a look at the top right there, you can see Stroll is actually having a pit to repair some damage. So that's a horrible, horrible start to the race for our rival there and that's going to help us out in that rivalry battle but focusing on ourselves here as we head into turn one on the start of lap two just trying to get as close as possible you can see here a bit further on Sergio Perez spinning at his home Grand Prix he was up there I believe in around fourth place so that's a huge shame there for the Mexican driver but that's just an extra position for us here, and you can see we're going to have a look at a replay of what happened. Just heading into the left hander here, he just lights it up a bit too much. Maybe not as much downforce as he would have liked on that car, and spinning right around. You can see dropping way out of the points, just sort of similar to Mexico last time out. He's just not having the best start to a race, and we'll have to see if he's able to do what he did last time out in the US, and maybe make his way up into the points, but... Focusing again on us right behind Charles Leclerc. You can see trying to set him up here in the stadium section. Running it a bit wide there. And we're actually able to get the crisscross there and get next to him. We're going to have the outside for the last corner. But that should give us a bit of a better run as we can take the corner a bit wider. And he actually backs out of it there. And that is us up into P6. So very good starting position for us here. And you see looking behind. They're all going to start battling away with each other as Leclerc didn't get a great run out of the final corner and that's Max Verstappen getting up and past Leclerc and actually Esteban Ocon as well having a look there and he is through so Leclerc losing three three positions basically in that one straight as Ocon and Verstappen now battle it out side by side Ocon got a really good run down that straight as they go side by side now out of turn three towards turn four you can see that's the Renault engine versus the Honda engine for you Verstappen just getting a much better run down the straight but Ocon catching back up in the braking zone. And now Pierre Gasly actually getting in on the action, trying to go up side by side with Charles Leclerc. Verstappen gets ahead of Ocon, and Gasly gets ahead of Leclerc. So Leclerc, in about half a lap there, lost four positions. So that's a huge shame there for the Ferrari driver. But for ourselves, it's worked out very well so far this race, moving ourselves from P9 to P6 after qualifying in P12. And now we are chasing down the German driver, Sebastian Vettel, our rival's teammate for P5 here as we head into the stadium section on lap number 6 going into the hairpin. You can see how much we're actually closing up here so I wonder if maybe Vettel got a bit of damage somewhere but he doesn't think it's worth pitting on like his teammate or something or I don't know what maybe those tyres are a bit more worn out so yeah we'll have to see actually you see Giovinazzi out of the session so that's a shame there for the Italian driver and the Alfa Romeo as we head down the main straight to go on the lap 7 Focusing on Vettel ahead, you can see we've got the slipstream, we've got DRS using our energy as we go to the outside here towards turn one. We're going to try and make the move Vettel hold position there. We're going to go side by side through turn two. And there's actually another yellow flag here next to us as we just about get ahead of Vettel there. Big tank slapper, but luckily we're ahead and we have the DRS to try and hold position. But we're going to have a look at what the yellow flag was. As you can see it's Pierre Gasly and the Alpha Tauri heading towards turn one. And it's an engine failure there. So I was just saying that the Honda engine seems to be a pretty good engine. But yeah, unfortunately there for the French driver in the Alpha Tauri, it has blown up on him. And we're just going to have a look here at what happened to Giovinazzi. Similar section to what happened to Perez. Did he have a spin? Oh, it's not quite looking like it. No, it's not. He's had some sort of mechanical issue as well. So the Ferrari engine having a bit of trouble as well around this track so it'll be interesting to see if anyone else has some sort of engine issues to see two cars there have some sort of failure within half a lap of each other it's pretty rare to see and you can see actually we get a safety car there I don't know if that was for Gasly or for Giovinazzi I'd say maybe for Gasly he was in a bit more of a precarious situation get Giovinazzi got right out of it but we are going to take this opportunity to make our first 
pit stop, of the two pit stops that we're making in this race, and you can see pretty much everyone else is doing the exact same thing. The two McLarens and the two Mercedes double stacking as well, so that's actually going to really hurt them as we head down the pit lane. Hamilton is out in the lead, but just look at Bottas dropping down the pack as all the cars come into the pit lane. You can see putting on the medium tyres. We're going to come out in P5 there, so we haven't gained any positions. Uh, it doesn't look like... Uh, but you can see Valtteri Bottas right down in P8 at the moment, so that's a huge shame for him. Lando Norris also got really held up in that pit stop. So, yeah, the, the safety car already starting to shake up the order a bit. And actually, the reason we didn't gain position is because a couple drivers actually decided to stay out. So you can see we've got Schwartzman and Russell right behind us here, but they haven't made their pit stop. They started on the medium tyres, so... The order's sort of shuffled around now. You can see, having a look at the order, Alonso out in first, so and Yuki Tsunoda actually out in third, so that's the reason. So we are in an effective third place. We're in a podium position here. You can see Ricardo in fourth. There's ourselves in fifth, just ahead of George Russell and our teammate Robert Schwartzman in P7. Bottas right down in eighth, so he's going to be struggling in that battle for the championship. There's Raikkonen in ninth. He also hasn't pit. And Vettel in tenth, and you can see behind Vettel is Max Verstappen as well, so we're all battling Verstappen just earlier on in the race and he's right down in 11th now while we're up in 5th so a lot of order <laughs> shaking up going on with this safety car and a few DNFs but you can see now on lap number 9 the safety car is coming in on this lap as we head on to lap 10 and we're going to have to try and get as good a run as possible it's not great as we get a bit of a tank slap and just trying to get on the power unfortunately we just went in a great position sort of lined up about halfway through the final corner there and just having to get on the power earlier than we would have liked. And you can see all the cars ahead of us are battling. Russell luckily doesn't have enough pace to try and go for the move, but Sonoda and Ricardo making a bit of contact there. And Russell trying to have a little look. And what has happened there? I think Alonso spun out of turn three. And we've all had to smash on the brakes not to hit each other. And Schwartzman, what a run for our teammate there to get himself up now battling for third place. Of course, he hasn't made a pit stop yet, but either is Sonoda. We've got Valtteri Bottas side by side with us here. We have to smash on the brakes not to run up the back of Sonoda. And now Bottas trying to make a move into the double right-hander. And we're going to go side by side. We haven't quite pulled back ahead yet. And we're actually just going to have to back out and let Bottas go there. Not wanting to end up in an accident with him as we head in the left-hander. But Schwartzman, our teammate, got an absolutely mega restart there after Alonso spun out out of turn three. And he's up in P3 and he's actually sort of taken off a bit. As you can see, Bottas now going for a move on Sonoda. And I don't want to let these guys run away. I am in a legitimate fight with Bottas at this point as I'm going to try and go for a move on Sonoda. But once again, just the car being very, very loose here on these mediums. I don't think, uh, I don't think these mediums suit this car, or at least my driving style at this point. As you can see, Bottas has absolutely taken off after Schwartzman at this point, and we're going to pretty easily get ahead of Sonoda there. The Alpha Tower going pretty slow. Maybe they've sort of told him to back off of the engine a bit after what happened to Gasly earlier on, but you can actually see here comes Sebastian Vettel. He's on the soft tyres as we head into turn one. We're going to be three wide as we get ahead of Sonoda now, but we're still side by side with Vettel, but we do pull ahead through turn two and three there. And now we're just going to have to focus on maybe trying to close in on either Bottas or our teammate. I imagine Bottas will get past Schwartzman pretty quickly. But wow, what a crazy restart that was. Alonso spinning out there out of turn number three as Vettel tries to have a little look at us there. But runs himself wide as we had the inside there. But wow, that, that was very, very close to having an accident there at some point. As we have a look up ahead at Schwartzman, you can see Bottas is definitely right behind him and getting held up as they head down this back straight. Bottas will have... Uh, actually, no, he won't have DRS. Uh, that gets enabled again next lap, but he either way he gets enough momentum to dive down the inside and get himself up into third place. And that's allowed us to actually close in on our teammate as we head through the final corner here, getting ready to go on to lap number 12. You can see Sebastian Vettel is right on the back of us as well. As here we go down the back straight, we're not going to have DRS just yet. The next DRS detection zone will be enough, but Vettel is right behind us in the slipstream here. He's going to go to our inside as we head towards turn one. We're going to try and defend, and then last second go back on the racing line to try and sweep around the outside of the German into turn two. We have the inside, but Vettel is just ahead on those better tyres. A bit more grip. 
and he's able to get ahead of us and he's going to try chasing after Schwartzman now. Hopefully we can do something about closing in on him maybe later on in the stint when his tyres are starting to wear out a bit. We'll be able to do something about it. You can see cutting back onto our car on board view here. We are trying to stay as close as possible and Bottas has already taken off. But you can see we've also made a massive gap to Sonoda behind. So, yeah, sort of so, sort of starting to sort ourselves out here. Sort of starting to get an idea on where we are going to be aiming to finish in this race. And I think it could very well be a pretty close battle with Vettel here. Uh, Schwartzman is yet to make a pit stop. I'll actually be very interested to see if he decides to try and make this a one stop onto the hard tyres. Because that could very well bring him onto the battle. Especially if we have another safety car later on in the race. So... Yeah, Schwartzman doing pretty well at this point to be up where he is on those super old mediums by now as we head through the final corner. No no pit stops there from Schwartzman just yet, so he's still going. He's pushing these tyres pretty far as we go down the main straight here. Vettel is going to have the DRS this time round and Schwartzman will not. So Vettel should be able to pretty easily get ahead of our teammate there and you can see he is. He's able to get back on the racing line and actually us behind. We're going to try and dive to the outside of turn one as well. I don't want to lose any time to Vettel and Schwartzman doesn't put up too much of a fight there. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I guess a bit of team orders there helping us out. And, yeah, uh, that's very much appreciated. But you can see cutting on to lap number 15 now. Here's Charles Leclerc making a move on our teammate down the main straight. And that's Schwarzman dropping down to 7. So, yeah, those tyres definitely not going well. But surely our teammate is going on a one-stop strategy. You can see here on lap 16, here's Lando Norris, who got really screwed over in those pit stops, making his way through on Schwarzman and up into P7 now. So Schwarzman slowly tumbling down the order. Which, it, it's not nice to see, but remember, he is possibly going for that one-stop strategy. You see, Vettel's been able to pull way ahead at this point on those soft tyres. There's Hamilton in the pit lane. He's actually on the hard tyres, as we have Charles Leclerc now trying to make a move on us down the main straight towards turn one. And he gets that move done pretty early, and we're not really able to challenge that into turn one again. Hopefully, maybe later on, we can close in. But we do now have Lewis Hamilton right behind us on the hard tyres. It'll be interesting to see the pace difference on some worn mediums versus fresh hards. Because I just really don't think those hard tyres are a good race tyre. So it's inter it'll be interesting to see how the Mercedes deals with that. But trying to stay as close as possible to Leclerc. Maybe in the pit stop phase we can try and make a move. But you can see here's the point now where Vettel's tyres are starting to wear out. And Leclerc's sort of gotten held up by him, and we've been able to catch up again. You can see Hamilton's actually closed in on the back of us as we head through the stadium section. So a lot could go on here as we head through the final corner. Vettel peels into the pit lane, and that leaves Leclerc exposed with no slipstream. He will have DRS because he was right behind Vettel in the detection zone, but he does not have that crucial slipstream. So we're going to pull out side by side down the main street. You can see this is where our pace sort of evens out as we, we don't have any more slipstream. But as we head down to turn one, we're going to go side by side with each other. I'll have the outside for turn two, which is usually where you get that advantage when you're trying to overtake someone. And through turn three, we have the inside and we're able to move ourselves up into position three here. So we're on the podium legitimately at this point in the race as we head into the left hander and right and Leclerc is through there. But... We're going to hold side by side again as we go through the double right-hander next. And this time Leclerc gets fully ahead of us. And we're just going to have to sit behind through the S section and eat the dirty air that he's producing right now. As we just try and hold on. But you can see the Ferrari really holding us up through there. But we will have DRS actually. So this is going to help us close into the stadium section. Into the right-hander here. Trying to get as close as possible here under brakes into the hairpin because down the main straight is very easy to make a move if you're close enough we don't want to use too much ers oil you can see we've still got 90 percent battery i'm trying to save that for maybe later on in the race as we head down the main straight are we going to be close enough to go for a move here we should be as he doesn't have drs this time so we're really closing in on the back of the monogas driver he defends to the inside there heading towards turn one but you can see we clearly pass him before the braking zone, and that is ourselves once again into P3. This is a crazy battle here. Hamilton trying to make his way through to get himself back onto the podium at the moment, but you can see cutting onto lap 23 now. Leclerc has made his podium. In fact, everyone around us has made his podium. So for at the moment, we are leading the Grand Prix as Hamilton now dives to the inside and he takes the lead, uh, but we do still have to make, a, make another pit stop anyway. So. He was already in the effective lead of the Grand Prix, you can see. 
Bottas in P3 behind us. He was able to make his way back up into an effective second position. And he's actually battling over okay, with Daniel Ricciardo. So, yeah, this, this championship battle between these two Mercedes cars is starting to heat up a little bit. It sort of seems to swing one way and the other. But as we heard further on into the laps here on lap 25 now, we're actually staying with Hamilton. Sort of using him as a bit of a toe to pull us further and further away from the cars that made their pit stop. Trying to just eke these tyre life out and make sure that those soft tyres that we're going to be going on to at the end of the race don't die out too quick because if we pit too early I don't want those those tyres to be gone by the end of the race I want to have something to fight with but you can see Hamilton did make a massive mistake through that S section there and that's allowed us to sort of keep up with him for at least another lap here because our mediums are starting to wear off he was pulling a gap but that big mistake allowed us to close in so yeah, just sort of managing the race at the moment, but you can see here a massive couple tank slappers there. These tyres really are screaming to be taken off of this car, and you can see here on lap 26, we are going to do exactly that in for our second pit stop, getting it stopped just before the line. You can see locking the tyres right up, trying to get the car stopped in time and not get that penalty, but luckily we have done that, and we're going to start tumbling down the order a little bit now as we go into our pit stop, but... We should hopefully have a strategy advantage over those around us now on these soft tyres. I imagine a lot of people around us may be on mediums, or at least they'll be on a much older soft tyres. As you can see, actually, Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel, they're way ahead of us, but they are battling away with each other here on the medium tyres. Sergio Perez has actually gotten himself up ahead of us here in P7. So, as I said, just like in the US, he's he has made a bit of a comeback here. It's just a shame that he makes those mistakes or just doesn't have that pace earlier on in the race because I really feel like he could be up there challenging for wins with the pace that he shows throughout the races. You can see he's actually in contention for a P5 or a P4. So, yeah, it's just a shame there for the Mexican. He could have put on a very good race here at his home Grand Prix, which he has done a bit of a good race to be able to come back up from. He, uh, he would have been down in around P15 by the time he got himself going again. But... Yeah, you can just look at the advantage that we have on these soft tyres as we head down the back straight. We've got DRS here, but not going to go for a move just yet. Don't want to try and risk anything when we've got as much opportunity as we do here into the stadium section. Just getting right in behind Sergio Perez. The crowd may not like to see this next move that we're going to pull off down this back main straight. As we go through the final corner, you can see a lot more stable than it was the last couple laps with DRS. You can see we're not actually going to be able to make a move on Paris here because he goes and makes a move on Vettel, but we're going to follow him through because Vettel didn't have any DRS. He wasn't close enough to Leclerc ahead and we are both through before even getting into the braking zone, but now we have our eyes set on Sergio Perez as we head down the back straight. We might even be able to go for a move into turn four. Perhaps he does have DRS still, obviously getting double DRS around this track and we're not quite able to go for a move, but we definitely have the the pace to stay on him for the next lap around as we head through the double right-hander. You can just see how close we are as we now head down the main street. Once again, on lap number 30, we are right in behind Sergio Perez. He doesn't have... Actually, he does have DRS this time, close enough to the cars ahead, but we had a much bigger slipstream than him, diving it to the inside of turn one, round the outside of turn two. Once again, we have the inside of turn three there, and we are ahead and up into P6, ahead of Perez in the Red Bull. This time, though, I do think we'll be able to win this battle out of the two of us as we close in on Lando Norris and Charles Leclerc, who are in a big battle for position four. This, this race is, is absolutely crazy with this strategy. This is why we love races with two stops, because... The different strategies just all seem to come together at the end. And you get these crazy, crazy battles. And, yeah, it's just awesome going through the S section here with the soft tyres against these guys on the mediums. We're not quite close enough to go for a move here on Leclerc. And he wasn't close enough to go for a move on Norris as once again into the stadium section on lap 30. We've done a lot of laps here. We've got six more to do after we finish this one, heading into the final corner now. And we still have some pretty good grip on these tyres. You can see, not as good as it was before, having to make a little correction there as we head on the main straight. But we are very close to Charles Leclerc. We're going to have DRS. He has DRS on Norris. So this could end up being a three-way fight as we head towards turn one. We're closing in, closing in. Are we having 
enough of a pace to get into turn one. Not quite. He tries to have a look at Norris. Not quite able to do it. So we're going to stay behind through turn one, two, and three. As we head through turn four, massive tank slapper heading towards turn four there, I should say. And not going to be able to go for a move this time around. But we still do have that tire advantage over these guys. Maybe not as much as we did when we first came out of the pit stops. And actually, going through turn five, we get a beautiful, beautiful move on the clur there. Getting that crisscross. And that is ourselves up into P5. And now we're going to chase down Lando Norris in the McLaren. But what a move that was. That just sort of happened to open itself up as we got that better run through turn five and towards turn six. And you can see Norris not having the best line there. Those mediums wearing out. He did make quite an early pit stop on to this third stint as we head into the stadium section. You can just see the tyre difference here. The McLaren is still a faster car than us, but we are really closing in through this final few corners with the extra grip that we do have. We're going to have to be careful with the cars behind. They're going to have DRS on us, but we're going to have DRS on Norris. We, he does have a pretty big gap down this straight however with no slipstream or drs and i don't know how he's using his energy towards this race it doesn't look like he's using much though because we are really closing in on him he's going to sort of switch to the inside at the last second there we're going to dive around the outside and we actually get the move done pretty early not even having to battle through turn through two and three there and we are up into p4 now so great race so far at this point you can see it on lap 32 not many laps to go at this point and just hopefully we have enough tires left to maybe pull away from this group and not get caught in too many battles but you can see here oh, this was happening at the same time on lap 32 this is a change for the lead as Valtteri Bottas catches Lewis Hamilton and makes the move into turn one he takes the lead of the race and that'll help him maintain the championship lead if Hamilton wins this race over Bottas Hamilton will take the lead of the championship but if Bottas wins obviously Bottas will hold that lead so that's a very intense battle there between those guys as we head down the main straight on the lap 33. Are we going to get attacked here? Norris is coming at us at a rate of knots towards turn one. He's going to go to the outside. We're going to have the inside line here at turn one. We're going to go side by side. We're going to have the outside for turn two pulling back in behind there. Not quite able to hold on. Our soft tyres are starting to, to lose a bit of pace. and I'd say they're about equal with, the, with those guys on the mediums now. So the tyre advantage looks like it may be gone as we have Leclerc right in behind us, but just trying to keep up with Norris, and maybe we're able to get ourselves back into P4 next time around on the main straight. You can see heading through the S's here. We're not quite having as good a run as we were before with the dirty air just sort of putting us off, trying to stay as close as possible. We're going to have DRS here, so we might actually be able to go for a move as we head towards the stadium section. Just backing out there, a bit of a lockup from Lando as we head into the hairpin. Are we able to go for a move into the hairpin here? No. We're going to decide to sit behind and wait until we get onto the main straight and get that DRS as we go through the final corner now. We're going to have that DRS. We're going to have slipstream. We, as you can see, we've got plenty of battery left. That's why we were saving it, because if we ended up in a battle like this, which I thought we might towards the end of the race, we need to have that energy to be able to, do, to overtake and defend from the guys around us as we quite easily get ourselves back up into P4 now, into turn one and two. So, yeah. I don't think we're going to be able to pull away. We may find ourselves in a battle here, and it might even be a bit of a luck of the draw to see who gets into what position. You can see heading on to lap 35 once again, Lando is going to try and make a move on us here, and I'm not even going to really defend this one too much as we just sort of drive mid-track, and Lando is very easily through, and we're, just, we're back on the racing line into turn one, which allows us to go around the outside, and once again... We've defended that move from Lando heading out of turn three towards turn four. He will have DRS again, so it'll be interesting to see here if this straight is long enough for the McLaren to try and make a move on us. And you can see it's not quite. So for now, we're holding on. But you can see it going on to the last lap. Here's Lewis Hamilton. He's been sitting behind Bottas since Bottas made that move. He's going to dive to the inside of turn one. They're going to go side by side through turn two and three. And Hamilton is going to get himself side by side. I thought he was going to get ahead. Not quite. Bottas is holding on to this. This is a final lap battle for the championship lead. And Hamilton has now got himself ahead of Valtteri Bottas as they head into turn four and five there. So 
Big championship implications with that move there on the final lap of the race. You can see we've hold, held our position over Lando Norris here. Once again, he's going to have a look with DRS as we head down this back straight. Is he going to be close enough to go for a move? Not quite. We hold on to the position there as we head in the turn four and five. And it looks like we may have that move all done and dusted as we go through the double right hander there. We're just going to have to try and hold on for this final DRS straight as we head towards the left hander to begin off the ver the first of these fastest as you can see how slow we're going now the these soft tires are really really gone having to really roll through these corners to make sure i don't run wide you can see even though i was going slow i've lost a lot of time there hamilton wins the grand prix norris going for a move as we head into the stadium section there all the all the confetti going off we can see getting a tank slapper as we go on the curb norris is going to go around our outside of the hairpin we're going to go side by side through this final section we're going to go side by side into the final corner getting a massive tank slapper on the exit it looks like lando is going to get us here and we're going to finish p5 at the mexican grand prix all right race over take care of the car on the way in That's a spectacular victory then, and with it, the championship is secure. It's been a magnificent season, and they thoroughly deserve the cheers of the crowd here today. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, they played the safety car to absolute perfection. There are so many factors to worry about once the race is neutralized. I mean, do you pit for fresh rubber? Do you have the space behind you? How much fuel can you save? If you answer all of those questions correctly, you'll have a good chance. And that's exactly what happened today. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. And here we are now with the results for the Mexican Grand Prix. What a race that was. A lot of battles throughout. You can see there we are in P5 in the end. A very good result for us in the end to get those 10 points ahead of Leclerc and Perez there. We were all in that battle. You can see Sainz was there as well. Verstappen not too far behind. So, yeah, we made up some good positions there. Had some great battles. You can see Schwartzman, unfortunately, ended up in P16. He did end up having to go for a two-stop. That's a bit of a shame, unfortunately. Once again, the team not putting him on the best strategy. He definitely could have gone for the hard tyres, I think. And we saw with Hamilton that those tyres actually were a pretty good race tyre for the AI, at least. I don't know how much it would have helped me, because I didn't really like the tyres. But certainly for Hamilton, it worked. You can see in the Drivers' Championship, we say in P8, ahead of Carlos Sainz and behind Leclerc. So still in that Ferrari sandwich in the Drivers' Championship. And... Yeah, that's actually very good to be up as far as we are. You can see we're ahead of both Aston Martins, ahead of the Alpines, ahead of Alpha Towers and everything. So that's really good for us there. You can see Schwartzman's still in P19, hasn't gotten any extra points. It'd be nice if we could get those extra points and get ahead of Russell. But you can see, once again, we have moved ourselves ahead of Aston Martin with those uh, the, the, these results. Stroll, unfortunately, not getting any points there for him. And Vettel right down the bottom of the top 10. So... That's ourselves up in the P5 in the Constructors, and this could be a very important battle, because this will get us those extra million dollars, which could help with our development. You can see there we get two points over Stroll in the rivalry breakdown, so we lost a point to him in qualifying, but we've made up two points in the race. You can see they're 20 to 16 in that rivalry, getting ourselves a, a fair amount of driver acclaim. So did Schwartzman, and that moves us closer to level 15 in the team acclaim as well, so... Hopefully we should be able to reach that next time out at the next race, which I believe is the Brazilian Grand Prix. You can see it getting both of our sponsorship bonuses there and only a bit of damage there for Schwartzman as well. So that's a bit of a shame that might have hurt his race a little bit as well. That might have influenced the double pit stop as opposed to just going for the hard tyres. But you can see there, just under 3 million in the bank. So making in some money, which is great for us, obviously, as we are working towards upgrading our facilities now 
to do admin work at the end of the video. Yeah, we're going to have to have a look here. We've only got two days between this weekend and next weekend of the Brazilian Grand Prix. And I decided to go for a driver promotion filming, filming and get some of that extra driver acclaim, which obviously will help the team acclaim. Having a now look at upgrades, obviously, we've now got these regulation changes for the powertrain and chassis that are coming in next. So we're going to have to start working on... Uh, on sort of saving these parts for next season. I think the rest of the season we're not going to really bring in any upgrades and it's just going to be about saving these upgrades that we already have. I think other teams are going to be battling and trying to upgrade their cars still okay. further on in the, the season the and I think it could be very important for us to save the ones we have and that might help us going into the next season will the other teams focus on the rest of this season. So you can see having to choose between losing 100k and 1,000 resource points there. And obviously we were just talking about saving components. So we're going to go for the safe solution option there. Lose $100,000 as opposed to the 1,000 resource points. And that's actually it. That's all the admin we had to do between, uh, between this episode and the next one. So yeah, that, that, that's all, all good and all sorted. But that's it. For this episode, everyone, if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to see more content like this. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.